Well, happy Tuesday, everybody. It's time for this week's video. Get ready. So, uh, today I want to talk about a few comments somebody made on two of my videos. And um, they made them on the videos on Facebook, where they were posted on Facebook. So, if you're looking down on YouTube below the video for those comments, that's not where they are. You'll have to find them on, on Facebook if you want to look for them. Um, I want to talk about them because they were made by a person who's relatively new to the gospel revolution and not all too familiar with the gospel and what we teach. So uh, let me go to his first comment. It was made on my last video and the title of that was There's No Fragmenting Grace. And um, in that video I said that Jesus, who was the Son of God, became man and then redeemed us and thereby raised us up um, equal with him and his comment on that was Jesus never became man and he said it was not scriptural and I can tell you that it is scriptural and it is biblical um, Jesus was prophesied often in the Old Testament as the son of man and any son of man is man but um, and Jesus oftentimes referred to himself in the third person and many of those times called himself the Son of Man. And um, Paul called him a man. And um, so I want to read something specific that Paul said about him. And uh, Let's see, let's start in Romans chapter 5 and verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. There's a reason why I started with this verse. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, and you'll see later that that many is all, because that was the offense of Adam, and all were dead because of him. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, man, hath abounded unto many also. Now, if you skip on down to verse 18, to just show that that was many was all. He said, therefore, because he's saying it again, only he changes the word from many to all. And he says, therefore, as by the offense of one man, or by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Now, Paul is the one who likes to refer to this word gift. And there's a reason why I'm saying that, because that leads to his second comment on the other video. The video was belief is a work and he said belief is not a work and he said we must accept the gift now belief being a work um, I'm not the first one who said that Jesus was the first one who said what belief was it was a work he was asked what is the work of God and he said the work of God is to believe on the one who was sent and he, right there he's saying it's a work but also it's the work of God Paul himself said that we are saved by the faith of Christ, by his belief, by his faith, and that not of ourself. It is the gift of God. Again, Paul is the one who likes to use the word gift. Now, he makes the statement, we must accept the gift. Um, Paul is saying here in verse 18 that by the offense of one man, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. See, that judgment comes upon all men, whether they believe they're judged, whether they accept that they're judged or not. They were, everybody was condemned by the sin of Adam. In same manner, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. The free gift came upon everybody. And uh, that's whether people know it 
believe it or accept it. There is no accepting of this gift. It's not like a gift that somebody walks up and offers you, says, here's a free gift, but you can, you have to accept it to receive it. That's not what Paul is saying. Yet this doctrine, this concept of um, it is a free gift, but you have to accept it, that is a doctrine that's only a few hundred years old. And from what I can tell, it's predominant in um, Anglo-Christianity and very predominant in uh, American Christianity. But uh, it's something that somebody came up with a while back as their concept of you have to, you don't get the gift unless you accept the gift, like somebody's offering you a gift. This gift was not, never offered to us. It was done for us. That's how good of a gift it was. Now, I can tell you one more thing, though. If a person who believes that people who have not accepted the gift are damned to hell, and they accept this truth right here in Romans that Paul is saying, then it's truly good news for them. It's revolutionary, as a matter of fact. Have a revolutionary week.